Good afternoon. Hi, Hugh. Hello. Good afternoon, Hugh. We're now live on YouTube. Okay, Tracy, thank you. I think I think we're all here now. That's um uh, what, is Councillor Mrs. Margaret Rowley here? I think we just uh, okay. we've just got a couple more minutes and yeah, just one person to arrive, Councillor Rowley. That's somebody's pacemaker in the back. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> It's 2.30, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Tracy. Right, good afternoon and welcome to the um, Community and Funding Panel's um, advisory panel. Um, a few housekeeping um, messages just before we get going. Obviously, we've been um, live on YouTube, so if, if we can all keep um, the microphones muted, please. We should be um, well-versed on this now. And uh, do we have any apologies, Tracy? No apologies, Chairman. Thank you. Item two on the agenda then. Any declarations of interest? I don't see any hands up. Okay, thank you. Item three is to note the minutes of the last meeting. Are there any comments, please? I have a comment, um, Chairman, on page um, seven. We Last time, last meeting, we approved the bus shelter for Cleve Prior Parish Council, but we had a couple of questions that we needed clarifying. The first question was, will it be erected at a regular bus stop location? And the answer is yes, it will be erected at a regular bus stop location, which was the same location as where the old one was. And then the second question was, has the Parish Council considered using fire retardant material? Well, they are considering this and they are currently getting a quote for a brick one. Fabulous. Thank you, Tracy. So can I have a um, proposer for those minutes, then, please? Thank you, Councillor Francis-Smith. And the seconder, please. I'd second. Um, second. Councillor David Morris, thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. Right, on to item four, and I'd like to introduce um, Councillor Adams to um, give me some feedback, or give us some feedback from the Executive um, Committee. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Just two small points from uh, me this afternoon. Uh, your recommendation from Dodderhill Dodder Parish Council of £83,000 towards which Bold Village Hall referred, that was unanimously supported by the executive board and has been through full council now as well. And just on page five, there's a comment there from Mrs. Rowley made, a very valid comment, which was supported by you all, uh, about the W factor and just spreading our uh, wings a little bit on trying to get more people involved with the uh, other tunnel. So I see in the minutes it said, not just drama and, and music, but uh, music and dance and that sort of thing is, been mainly uh, done with that but we just uh, anyway the outcome is I've had a meeting with uh, Stephen Gabriel and Rob Mace and uh, there will be another coming up to see 
how we take this forward, just to get the message out a little bit further, see if we can get some other types of ta talent involved. So those were the two points, Mr. Chairman. Um, any comments at all? No? Yeah, Councillor like Margaret Bradley. Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Rob for taking that forward. I do think uh, that we need to offer more uh, opportunities for young people, and I look forward to seeing more applicants for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, can we move on to item five, then, Boundary Commission review? Um, over to our Chief Executive, Vic Allison. Yes, thanks, Chairman. Um, so it wasn't that long ago when we had an all councillor briefing, so I won't, I won't go through all of that again. Um, just a quick reminder that um, we have a new timetable now. Uh, key dates being that the uh, warding consultation uh, starts on the 14th of July and will run until the 21st of September. For those of us who are considering submitting proposals for our new warding patterns, and as a reminder to support 43 councillors, 43 district councillors, um, then the deadline is the 21st of September. Okay. Um, and then as I explained in the briefing, the Boundary Commission will go away and think about all the suggestions that's been put to them and will then publish their draft recommendations um, on the 1st of February 2022 and that will start a further consultation process on their draft recommendations which will close on the 11th of April. All this gets wrapped up by July 2022 in good time of course for the District Council 2023 elections. So uh, that's what that's what this is all about. So there's the timetable. Thanks, Tracy. If you can go back to uh, normal view. And then the only other thing to note is the software um, is due around now, and we've received uh, nominations for councillors who want to have access and the uh, training to be able to use that software uh, so that you can come up with your own. Uh, solutions. So uh, that will happen very soon. And as I say, we've got now several months until September to submit proposals. That's all I wanted to say this time, Chairman. No doubt in future meetings there'll be more to say, uh, but that's probably that's probably enough for now, unless there are any questions. Okay. Any questions for Vic at all on that one? Councillor Nich Nicholas Wright. Yes. But can I just ask you, although it's 14th of July, can one come up with proposals before then or is it not worth it from the point of view of individual um yeah, yeah. i mean so so we we will all start working so officers and i dare say some councillors will start working on the project now on proposals now we know we know what the objective is um i.e come up with awarding patterns to support 43 councillors uh, so we know what the rules are because we've all had those explained to us and hopefully we'll have the software. So there's no reason why we need to wait until the 14th of July to work on this. It's just that the official consultation period doesn't start until the 14th of July. So if you did send something into the Boundary Commission ahead of that date, they might say, uh, but thanks very much, but can you resubmit after the 14th of July? I don't know. They probably would just accept it, actually. Um, but importantly, the 14th of July is the start of the official consultation period. Uh, but yeah, that doesn't mean we have to wait until then to do to do some work on it, and I'm sure we all will. Okay, okay thank you for that. Any any more questions? No. Okay, thank you. So moving on to item six, uh, Vic again, please, on the um, econ economic um, strategy and COVID re recovery plan, please. Yeah. Okay. So again, quite brief this time, although. Uh, these will be standing items on your agenda going forward, so I'll do a little update at each at each meeting. Um, so these we have new promises now agreed by the council in respect of each of these. So these will uh, be worked upon over the course of this year um, for the COVID recovery plan. If we deal with that first, we'll we'll uh, Cherry and I will be working on that this month with a with a view to sort of sharing things uh, maybe in April. Um, and then on terms of the economic strategy, I know that Phil and his team 
are um, aiming to get to somewhere like broad proposals by June, because they're considering um, stakeholder workshops and things, you know, around around that time. So uh, the period between now and June will be quite an intensive period of work for the economic strategy. It won't be finished by then because we'll have to do lots of consultation and discussion and workshops, but we hope that that will be in place by the end of the calendar year. And as, as I say, the COVID recovery plan, um, hopefully by the middle of the year, because uh, we'll, we'll, we need to move quite quickly on that so that when we come out of the restrictions, we're able to, uh, we're able to capitalize and make the most of, uh, make the most of the recovery. Okay, thank you, Vic. Any um, questions, comments? No? Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to item seven on the agenda, this community legacy grants update, and uh, I'd like to pass over to Cherry, please. Thank you, Jed. Um, this came as a late item last week by email, so has everybody seen it? Yeah. So this is an update on the projects we supported in the first two rounds of the Community Legacy Grants. Um, I've just done a quick calculation. So far, we've paid out about 57% of the round one grants awarded and about 42% of the round two grants. What you've got in the paper is a table showing the status of the round one and round two projects. So which are completed, how much has been paid to each. Um, roughly when they're due to be completed. So you'll see there's a few due to be completed round about now, um, and a number have been completed. And then at the back, you've got three project impact assessment forms from Flabbury, uh, PeopleTurn and Droitwich. So once the projects are completed, we send out a form like that and ask them to basically report on the outcome to the project. Um, what difference it's made, although with a couple of them, it might be a little bit early to say that. So we'll follow those up again in three to six months time. Um, so any questions? We'll, we'll do a report like this for every panel meeting going forward, I think. OK. Any, any questions from the, the panel at all? Um, Councillor Alex Sinton, then Councillor Francis Smith. Yes, it's not a comment. It's uh, the fact the one from Droidwich, and God bless you, Mark did a super presentation here. Well, actually, there is a there's a typo, and I just wanted to point it out that uh, that uh, on the penultimate page, it should be July 2020, not 21, of page two when he says project delivery delivery. The second paragraph, sorry, third paragraph. A potential serious issue was entered in July 2020. It should say, at least for 2021. Do you know where I am? on the one from about the cabin. Okay, thank you. Page 11 of 12, Alex. Uh, it's on, this is a, it's on the bit about what place. It's on the, the section from uh, the project impact assessment form from the Droid, which town council. So. Yes, it is, uh, Jerry, it's 11 of 12, yes. 11 and 12. Oh, yeah. 11 of 12, is, I've not got the numbers on mine actually, yeah. It says yeah, July 2021. It should be July. It's just a minor thing, but just in case. We'll update that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you. Thanks to Francis Smith. Sorry. I thought this, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought this uh, report was very useful. Um, it gives us a, a real insight into A, the amount of work the officers have to put into it and the amount of work that applicants have to put in. And I found it very useful, and it's a good idea that we can have this in the, for future meetings. Great idea. Thank you. Any more comments? I wonder whether the panel thinks we should be looking to share this more widely. Um, I'm not entirely sure to what extent this is all public information in these in impact assessment forms. Vic, any, any comments on that? Uh, well, our, our agenda has been published, hasn't it, for today? This this one wasn't for publication. Ah, right. So this didn't get published with the normal. No. Partly think, because it was late, but I think I think we'd struggle to argue it's confidential. Uh, I can't see any commercial or other reason why it would be confidential. 
but that doesn't necessarily mean we need to publish it. Uh, you know, we've obviously have somebody asked us for it. Um, sorry, no reason to suggest it should, we shouldn't, whether we should or shouldn't promote it is a different matter, I think is the point. Um, I'm of the view this is a good news story uh, mm -hmm. and we should, we should publish and promote. Um, no, no, no concerns about confidentiality or anything like that. Good, thank you. I, I, I'd go along with that um, opinion, definitely. And um, the, the members would, would benefit um, from knowing that as well, Cherry. I think what we'll do is in future put on the top of the form, this will be public information unless you, you tell us otherwise. And we'll just go back to these three and check that they're happy for that. Yeah, I thought that's a good idea. Okay, any other comments? Yes. And George yes. Steele. Well, well I, I totally agree with Francis. I think it's very useful to have this uh, information to hand. And uh, as far as keeping it confidential, it, I'm easy either way. Okay, thank you. So if there's no more comments, we'll move on to item eight of the agenda. And I'd like to uh, introduce Heather Peachy, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, can I just make a bit of an apology to start with, because there's been a bit of a mix up with the papers in, and in particular, the, the plans and the drawings have gone out with the reports. Um, so what I propose to do is I'll refer to the relevant pages as I go through my three reports. Um, and in addition, the Norton application form was not attached to um, and circulated, but I believe that uh, Tracy's kindly done that this morning, just, but I'm not sure whether all, all members will have seen that. Uh, but hopefully I'll be able to give you a flavour of the information that was contained in it if you, if you haven't had she managed to see those papers. Um, so my first item is it's a, an application for section 106 funds um, and it's been received from Breeden Parish Council for £26,394.69. Um, so uh, that's come from Breeden and it's a proposal to help the um, club to actually um, change their existing changing facilities which are no longer fit for purpose. Uh, they're not able to actually physically expand um, so they're looking at a, a replanning exercise within the existing space that they've got. Um, I've provided some details in the report um, they're going to uh, change the plumbing, add in a couple of additional changing rooms. So the plan, which is on actually page 33 of the pack, that gives a diagram showing that instead of two changing rooms and two sets of chairs, they, after these works, they will then have four um, sets of changing rooms and four sets of showers. Um, and that will give them far greater flexibility with it, with the teams that they've got currently running from the site. So the parish council actually own the land um, and the club themselves have a 25 year lease. The overall cost of the works is £37,780 plus VAT, but the club them will be funding the difference. So the proposal is that um, a sum of £26,394.69 will be allocated from our Section 106 reserves, which was in relation to the Oak Lane Breeden development. Uh, and uh, the, the, the project proposals satisfy the terms of the legal agreement itself. Okay, thank you for that, Heather. And um, I have personal knowledge of the said change rooms. Um, uh, a few years ago, um, sports, obviously, um, it's very packed and um, it is a bit um, chaotic there and it's a very successful club. So, and I believe this is part of the 106 agreement anyway, um, Heather. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. On point three, three, it says there, didn't it? Yeah, so um, that's 106 agreement, states of the money must be spent on improvements to breed and rugby club. Okay, any um, any comments?
We missed what you said, Jed, because you were on mute. Do you want to say that again? I do apologise. Um, Councillor you, you Hamilton. Yeah, just on the 25-year lease, are we at the beginning of that period? Um, I think they're a couple of years into it, Hugh, but I, it, I'm happy with it anyway because the right. parish council actually own the land. Yeah. Um, the lease is of more consequence for us where perhaps the land's owned by a private body because the worst case scenario is that this facility would just revert back to the parish council and they would they would let it for another sports facility so it would still be utilised locally. Thank you. Any other comments? Tracy. Oh, Councillor Francis Smith, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to propose that we accept this. It, um, it seems a um, worthwhile project and it, it um, satisfies the requirements of 106. Thank you. So I've, I've got a proposer and I'd like to second that. Um, can we go to the vote, please? All those in favour? Wonderful. Thank you very much. Heather. Thank you, Chair. Um, so then my next report is actually for an application again for Section 106 funds, and it's for improvements to Brown Heath Common. This is a little bit unusual, this application. So it, again, it's from the local parish council for £5,320.77. And um, I've included in the pack, and that is at, sorry, um, pages 21, 22, 23, up to page 26, um, some photographs uh, from a report that's been done. Brown Heath Common itself is a, a wooded area of common land, and it measures approximately 10 acres in size. It's, it's actually got an unknown ownership, but it is a registered common. And under the Commons Registration Act, local authorities then have, they're almost like caretakers. Um, anyway, this common's been neglected over the years. Um, and the parish council would like to carry out some work to it. Um, they would like to clear some rubbish from various areas, which can be seen from the photographs. They'd like to do some pruning um, and carrying out some other tree works, make good some sections of pathways and also remove some invasive species of plants. So the total cost of those proposed works is £9,550 plus that. Um, they've got a couple of thousand pounds secured from other grants and funding pots and the parish council themselves will fund any difference. Uh, overall, it will be a, um, a, a big improvement to the land and therefore it's in hopes, hopes that it will encourage more users to the site. Um, the money is currently held within the 106 reserve and that is from the development at Everton House, Droitwich, and the agreement states that the money must be utilised towards the provision and or enhancement of local facilities in the parish of Hinlip and Martin Husbandry. So the project satisfies the requirements set out in the legal agreement. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Heather. Have we any comments? Councillor Margaret Rowley. Yeah, very much support this. And at the moment, it's very derelict and I don't think many people venture onto it because it's quite hazardous. So I'm very pleased to see this proposal and I'd like to propose that uh, we agree that it should go forward. Thank you very much. Councillor Nicholas Wright. Well, I must admit I haven't been to this site at all, and uh, I'd be very much in favour of it, um, partly because of the natural networks have taken it, in, and also it's outside the sort of general build-up of, of the towns, and I think it would be really good to, to support it, so I would second it. Thank you. Councillor Audrey Still. Audrey, on mute. Oh, yes, I was going to second it, Chairman. My only question is, it says invasive trees. What are they, please? Oh, now, Audrey, you've, you've got, uh, got me on this one. I, I'm afraid I'm not a tree expert. 
Um, and, and, and I have to say that uh, Worcestershire wildlife are probably far, far better experts than I am. And I've just gone from the report. So I'm afraid I, I don't know the, the detail on that. I, I still think it needs to go forward. Thank you, Audrey. So we have a proposal from Margaret Rowley and seconded by Nicholas Wright. All those in favour? Fabulous. Thank you very much. Over to you, Heather, for the last one. Thank you, Chair. Um, so my third report, um, it, well, members will probably recall that back on uh, in the November meeting, we agreed to allocate £63,493 of funds from the 106 reserves to enable this sport and community project at Norton to move forward with its development phase. So since that date, um, the Community Interest Company has now been formed with it being incorporated in December. And we've now received a formal application for funding towards the works. Um, I, that now the um, redacted um, application form was uh, forwarded by um, Tracy, circulated by Tracy. So there's further details within that application form. I should just say the application form gives very rough figures as to how much this project is likely to cost because at the moment they, they're um, applying for planning um, and until that planning application has been um, decided on and then a tender pack is put together with full drawings, uh, that tender process will then take place and, and we will have far better information and figures as to what the overall costs of these works are going to be. Um, so, Obviously, that what they're looking for at this moment is for an allocation towards the project, um, subject to, you'll see in the recommendations that I've proposed. Um, my, I do have a concern on this one. Um, the Community Interest Company uh, are currently working with the, the owners of the site to secure a lease. Um, and due to the amount of money that we are considering putting into this project, I feel that it's important that the council should be a party to that leasehold interest. Um, that's really to ensure that should anything happen to the community interest company once these facilities are built out, that we would be able to step into that lease and we would then uh, be able to sublet it to another community co uh, interest company or um, a sports uh, provider, uh, community sports provider, so that the facility could still be used rather than it just going back to the landowners. So we're um, in negotiations with regard to um, that lease and the terms. So I don't have any of this inf that information um, bottomed out. However, it is important for them, for them to also be able to get further funding bids in, that they at least know that these funds are allocated to the project, although we wouldn't release them, obviously, until everything was in place. Um, we currently hold um, £665,944, sorry, £665,944 within our existing section 106 reserves. There is, however, a further sum that will be received over the next 12 months to two years of approximately 250,000 pounds from another development that has actually started on site. So we're actually asking members to um, allocate or allow us to allocate that money as well when it comes in to this project. So that that would give the uh, community interest company a significant amount of funds towards the project. And then when the tender process was done, they could see exactly what the gap funding was to be able to uh, uh, raise and, and, and put forward other bids. Uh, one, just one last thing I ought to just mention is that um, 
the parish council have I understand uh, from from what I understand put in a, an expression of interest for a hundred thousand pounds or so of legacy grant from the council that's not for consideration now but was just something I wanted to mention uh, because that that might be something Something else that they're looking to looking to generate further funds from. Councillor Audrey Steele, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I have some concerns from what Heather's told us this afternoon. So I'm going to propose that this is put onto the next agenda. And in the meantime, uh, the parish cat or the whoever's involved is written to to tell them where we're coming from and why we're just holding fire. I think it, it needs to be further down the road before we can actually uh, say that this funding can go ahead. Thank you, Audrey. Councillor Rob Adams. Mr Chairman, am I allowed to speak as the local member? Or should I wait? You can speak, Rob. Uh, just to say, as I'm very much in support of this application, and since the CIC uh, has been formed, they've come a long way in such a short time. As you know, there were several clubs go to make Worcester Sports Club. This, this certainly, this sports hall will be used, and very much, I feel that other monies will come along. Not least, perhaps, hopefully, from Whittington Walk because there are already right years ago there was money put towards sports uh, from um, the Kilbury Drive, um, um, 250 houses there. More will come along from the over 300, I'm sure, uh, from Swineshead there. Um, but, you know, there's several clubs. There's still things to be ironed out, but with, like Heather and others, you know, we're getting there. And, uh, you know, I look forward to the application coming along. I mean, the, the officers met and the buildings there are quite tired getting. Uh, and, you know, this will bring it up. And like I say, Norton is forever growing parish. Uh, just over the way in Malvern Hills, there's a couple of thousand houses uh, going to be built up there by Welbeck. So there, there is a need. But I do believe they have come a long, long way informing this CIC and obviously you know there was the gun club there there was the cricket club and the croquet and and all all sorts of things coming together and uh, I, I think they're getting there so it will happen and I'm sure money will be found which will be a, a fantastic uh, investment for Chaven. Thank you Rob. Um, Vic? Just if I could just come back on uh, Councillor Audrey Steele's point, I think Audrey is absolutely dead right. Um, this this does appear to be in um, too early for us to make a decision on, um, and and in an ideal world, this would be coming forward when all those ducks were in the row, in a row, if you know what I mean, in terms of the rest of the funding, in terms of the VAT issue, in terms of the legal agreement with the council. I think, I think the reason we've brought it forward now is to try and sort of nail down a bit of their funding so that they can then go and seek the remaining funding with some assurance that they've got an amount already in the bag from Witchhaven Council. It would then make the applications for other sources of funding a little easier. But having said that, and this is, this is Audrey's point exactly, we wouldn't want to release any funding at all until we were absolutely sure we got all those things in place to allow the project to proceed and, and ultimately be successful. So what, what I might suggest is that we, we, we approve it, to, if, if there, unless there are any other objections, we approve it in principle today, yeah, but then um, we won't release any money until um, officers are satisfied about all those things in the report. And we can commit to keeping the, the panel updated at each meeting, if that's helpful. So, you know, we, we, we earmark the money for this purpose so that they have the assurance it's there if they get the rest of the money. 
but again, we'll we'll keep the committee of the panel updated at each meeting and an assurance that we won't release any money at all until until everything's been ironed out. Thank you, Vic. Councillor Francis Smith. Thank you, Chairman. That was exactly what I was going to propose. Was there a chance that we could agree in principle to help them with their way forward to get other funding, but before and allowing us to get further information before we committed any any funds in full. Okay, thank you. Audrey, would you be okay with that proposal um, in, in, in um, going forward? I would, be, I would be happy with that, Chairman. I'd like to make sure that we get it on our, each of our agendas until it's further forward. Okay. So Tracy, are we okay with that um, proposal? Yes, yeah. Did did you want to put it to the vote or are you just gonna raise we hands put it to, on that one? We put it to the vote. Put that one to the vote. Okay then. Um, so everyone know what we're voting on? What Vic said. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah. The proposal is, in, in basic terms, is that we um, agree in, um, in principle to today and then um, obviously there's no money being released until we're satisfied with the um, outcomes. Yeah. Is that it's, I think actually, yeah. Chairman, it's, 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 I, mean, I know Heather wants to come in and it's important we get the words right, but I, th I think I was probably explaining what's already in the recommendations rather than yeah. changing the recommendations so the word allocate is deliberate so we're allocating the money for this purpose we're not actually giving money yet until we're not handing it over that's right so so i wasn't i wasn't suggesting we change the recommendations i was just clarifying the recommendations i think chairman so if, yeah. if, if yep. everybody's comfortable i think the recommendations as printed yeah would be the ones you're voting on Okay, yeah. thank you. Heather, yeah. would you like to come back? No, that was exactly what I was going to say, that actually I wrote the, the recommendations around the fact that I recognised that there were quite a, a number of details that had still got to be bottomed out and that, you know, I, I wanted you to be assured that we would bottom those out before we actually released any money. Um, but I'm more than happy to do an update, a short update for each meeting just to let you know how they're getting along. That's beneficial, thank you. So if we'd like to go to the vote then, all of those in favour of that recommendation. Super. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, everyone. So if, you, if you've got other things to do, Heather, then... Uh, Right. Moving she's, definitely, on to she's definitely got other things to do, Chairman. Because <laughs> I've given her loads to do today. <laughs> okay. Moving on to uh, item nine on the agenda, new homes bonus. Can I hand over to Tracy, please, to do the introductions? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. We, we are a bit ahead than we thought we would. So thank you, um, the parish councils, for coming on quicker than you thought we were going to. Um, we go to Bradfordton first. So I'd like to welcome Andrea Evans. Um, the proposal from Bretforton is for an all weather exercise and enjoyment path. They're asking us for 23,011. Um, that's the current amount they have available, the final amount they have available. The um, local member, he supports, he fully supports the proposal. So I'll hand it over to Andrea to give you a, uh, an update on, on the project. Hello, thank you. Um, so thank you very much. Um, this is an idea that's been stolen um, from uh, the parish council that I live in, in fact, for an all weather track, uh, but fits in beautifully in Bretforton in order to try and bring two parts of the community that are divided by a very major road and also incorporate the very houses that this new homes bonus has been associated with, a new development or two small developments in the last few years. Um, the idea of this is a track to run round the recreation ground, which will incorporate the play area and the cricket field. And it will also run along some memorial trees that we've got that are uh, 
uh, been planted for the uh, people who sadly died from Brexiton during the wars. Uh, so it provides a good route around the village, a circuit, circular route around the recreation ground, accessible by everybody within the village. Uh, the materials is all weather, so it can be used as an exercise track, it can be used for disabled access, and it can be used for children on bikes and trikes and whatever and young mums, but it will in, in, ensure that everybody within the village can use it as a facility. The uh, application is slightly over the amount that we have available, but the Parish Council will support that. And um, in terms of consultation with the village, we, we consulted with them some, some considerable time ago on a previous project, which unfortunately hasn't come into fruition. Um, but recently, in order to re-support that, we've hand-delivered a newsletter to every house within the parish, letting them know of this project so that we can ensure that everybody knows about it. Face-to-face -face has been difficult. Face-to-face uh, -face in 2016 we did where we had a number of people come forward so everybody is fully understanding that we've got new homes bonus money but of course over the last few months that's been difficult although we have had face-to-face -face feedback from people within the village when they're out walking but we can't hold an event as such I'm afraid. Thank you Andrea. Um, can I start a question please? Um, the all-weather track, is, is it, will it go around the, the complete field? Yeah, so it will start um, at the entrance of the play area near the car park and it will run the complete field. So anybody can arrive back to where they started. And luckily for us, it's around 400 metres. So it's a nice distance if you're using it for an exercise measure, but it does allow access from the car park if you want to park there and walk, or if you want to start at the play area and then walk the way round. You. Any questions from the um, panel, please? Hugh Hamilton. Yes, my only concern is um, it's a project of £23,000, but there only seem to be 10 supporters, five who have written in by email and five by face-to-face -face contact. So 10 seems rather a small number of supporters. In actual fact, I'm absolutely ecstatic that we've had 10 feedback because that's really unusual for a village, I'm sorry to say. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. And in different times, I would say it would be nice to have 100 people say that they support something. We haven't had anybody that says they don't support it. And regrettably, like lots of villages, um, Bretforton can sometimes be where people, um, if, they, if they haven't got a positive opinion, tend to not say anything. Um, but the only way we've been able to consult them, given the time limits that we've got, is, is by hand delivering. And we work on the basis. We gave them several ways in which to contact us if they had an opinion. But that's the only amount of people we've had reply, unfortunately. Everybody within the village had the opportunity to attend an open meeting back in 2016 when we knew we had the money. And we had probably 10 or 12 projects um, submitted then, but most of those were projects that we were able to fund through the parish council, small things, small changes within the village. This is obviously a much bigger one, um, and, and that's why we've done it via Spotted Bretforton, our Facebook page and the newsletter, but those are the only responses we've had. But like I said, I consider that to be a good response, actually. Okay, thank you. Ian? Well, um, first of all, I ought to say I know the area and this looks like an excellent project to me. The, the only question I'd ask is it seems fairly expensive for a 400 metre track. Um, although I have to say I don't know much about civil engineering costs. And so perhaps you could comment on that. Well, I don't know much about civil engineering costs either. Um, but what I do know is looking at the, the example that we've um, taken is from Offenham Parish Council, which is where I live. Um, this was a huge project in getting it underway. Um, it's completely level. It's got an edging round it so that it doesn't go out onto the grass, which is imperative because it's a cricket field as well. Um, and the surfacing um, is, is quite a fine ground 
resurfacing, which was required quite a few um, uh, attempts at, at rolling it to make sure that it stays in place. And I would say, therefore, that it's the time it takes to lay it and dig out what's there, but also to ensure the surfacing is not going to be something that's got to be replaced in a few years time. OK, thank you. I have a civil engineering background and I, I thought the price was fairly cheap, to be fair, so I will not be tendering for it. <laughs> <laughs> any, any more comments? OK, so will you go to the vote, Tracy, or do we need a proposer? Yeah, if we could have a proposer and a seconder, that would be good. Well, I'm happy to propose it. Could I have a I'm happy to second it. This is a recommendation to the executive board. Yep. Those in favour? It's everybody, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. Tracy. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chairman. We are ahead of schedule, as I mentioned. Um, Lynn, are you waiting for some of the people to arrive? Lynn? No, they can't make it. They're on school runs because you brought it early. They're sort of stuck at school gates. So it's just me, I'm afraid. Okay, well, do you, are, they, are they going to join at some point? Would they be available or...? Um, it depends. I mean, if you, if you want me to, if I can answer the questions now if you want them to come in, but then so they, they probably won't be back for another 20 minutes or so. Yeah, unless we could, I mean, we've got Diane Cox here and, and Jane. So if we go to. to we'll just, I'll tag them on the end and I'll give them a quick call back. Is that all right? Okay. And I, can, I can still sit here anyway. Is that all right? Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Yeah, so, okay, so what we'll do then, we'll go on to Offnum's proposal, which is on page 97 of your agenda. Um, this is for the Offnum Village Hall Future Proofing Scheme. They are asking us for £44,240 from the new homes bonus pot. This is against a total project cost of 63239 So we have Diane Cox and James Moclair. Um, on the call, so um, I'll welcome them and um, ask them to tell us about the project. So you're on mute, Diane. Mute. Right, okay. Um, I'm here on behalf of the chairman, actually, who, who couldn't make it due to work commitments, uh, and uh, Councillor James McClare, who's, who's also here. Uh, he is a member of the Parish Council and also a member of the Village Hall Management Committee. Now, the Parish Council is the custodian trustee to the Village Hall, but the Management Committee is solely responsible for the Hall. Uh, the Management Committee consists of seven members who are also and two of which are parish councillors. So we have a good working relationship between the parish council and the village hall committee. Over the past few years, the management committee have managed to secure grants to make extensive improvements to the hall, both inside and out, and have continued to fundraise for this project too, which has become harder over the last year, as you can imagine. £25,000 has been secured in grants uh, towards this project and uh, also if funding is going forward the Parish Council have also said that they can cover the VAT in the short term. Um, now the Parish Council consulted with residents by sending over 650 questionnaires to all households in the village and we managed to get a 10% response which I suppose before Christmas isn't too bad at all. 83% uh, supported the project, 3% wished money to be spent in the village but without expressing any preference for how it was spent, 14% made other suggestions and the parish council are already addressing those other suggestions with, with just one exception. 
The project will enable the village hall to become self-sufficient, and this is the, the idea, without having to uh, rely on the parish council to assist them for costs on an annual basis. This is beneficial to all residents because it means that we won't need to make any provision within our annual budget. Uh, I think I, if I can introduce James McClare perhaps to uh, expand on the actual project because he's been involved with all the uh, contractors and the technical details, which I'm not very good at. So I'll hand over to James. Thank you, Diane. Right. The project is, is set out in a few different areas. What we're looking to do is put solar panels onto the roof of the village hall. And what we're looking for that is for 28 solar panels. Now, what this will do, this will give us enough energy, not only to run the hall, but also future proof this if we want to extend some time in the future. And this is one of the projects that we have been looking at. The solar panels will also have a, a 10 kilowatt battery with it, which will give us quite a large reserve. And that reserve will allow us when we open for proper functions and we have discos and things like that, we won't have to tap into the main grid. What we can do is we'll have a battery there that will supplement the electricity. And also what we're looking within the project is to install an electrical vehicle charger. Now the electrical vehicle charger is uh, solar uh, compatible and uh, this will be installed outside the hall. It's a pay as you go thing where you put a, a card into it. But what that will do is that will actually raise a little bit of revenue for the hall as well. The next part of the project was having uh, a terrace on the outside. And this has been looked at um, for some years now. We've had full planning consent to have this put in. And what we're looking to do is to increase our wheelchair access. Um, and so what we're doing is we're having proper wheelchair access in and out of the hall. But the other thing is, is with the terrace, what we can do is because of the COVID situation is we will now have an entrance going through the main part of the hall and an actual exit coming out as well. And this will allow us to run other functions in the near future. Um, as you're aware, with, with the COVID regulations, um, some, some of the pubs and bars are now trying to open. The hall has its own bar. And what we're hoping to do is then uh, have a facility outside where people can enjoy the, the outside air and have a, a little place to sit as well. So thank you for that. You're on mute, Jed. Oh, oh dear. Sorry about that. Thank you, That's James. It, You're welcome. Where about is the, um, the terraced area about to be situated? The, the terraced area will be uh, on the south side, which is, which is uh, where we have the recreation ground at, the, at this point of time. The solar panels will also be installed on the south side, where we've got sun all the, the year round on it. Um, and the terraced area will actually be the full length of the hall and three metres out. And the terrace will have a, a rail going around the outside for safety as well. And what we're doing is we're also in, including in with the terrace, we're having some external lights put on there as well. These are all going to be LED lights, which will be run off the solar panels. It sounds like a good project and fits in with our intelligently green plan, um, definitely. So, any comments from the, uh, the panel? No, no questions? Um, Nicholas Wright, please. Is it owned by the parish, not owned by the parish council? But the hall is owned by the, um, the, 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 we are just a cost, uh, we are just, um, responsible for the upkeep of it. The, the actual hall is owned by the parish council, I believe. Is that right, Diane? It's, we're not actually the owners, no. We're custodian trustees. So uh, if, the, if uh, the village hall committee decide that they all want to walk away, then it falls to the responsibility of the parish council. Um, so there is always somebody in the background who will be taking responsibility for the hall. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Vic. 
Chairman, just a, just a, a, a comment, really, or, or a, a hopefully a, a helpful suggestion about the electric vehicle charging points. I don't know whether um, the guys have been able to get advice and expert, or even if they're experts themselves, but we did quite a bit of research here to make sure that we invested in the right technology. Um, and if, if, if the guys wanted access to that uh, knowledge base, then let me know and I can put them in touch with uh, our experts here who know quite a lot about EV charging points. That's not to say that you may already know what you're doing and be completely comfortable with what you're proposing, in which case fine, but just an offer of assistance should they need it. I think any information is always welcome. So contact David Niblett in our uh, property team. He's uh, he's done quite a bit of work on this. And there's all manner of, there's seven kilowatt chargers and 20, 50, 100. And, you know, you need to think about the power supply from the grid if you go bigger um, and all of that. But uh, We've actually got um, three-phase electricity actually in the hall. So right. apparently that is... Okay. I'm not very technical on it, but that's they tell me that's the right thing to have. Neither am I, but uh, I wouldn't yeah. want you to invest in the wrong technology. Yeah. Um, no. you know, VHS what, what, what rather than Betamax and all of that. <laughs> Nick, what, what I did do is I, I, we had quite a few consultations with various solar energy providers. And uh, the, the one that we're looking for is, com uh, is a fast charger that's compatible with all the Tesla range of things at the moment. And I think from a technology point of view, this is probably one of the most up-to-date systems that you can get. Yeah, you, 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 I agree. It's just making sure that you've got sufficient power. Sure. Um, the, 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 basically, the infrastructure will cope with it. Yes. Um, but, yeah. So if you, need, if you need some help with that, then Thank uh, you. let us know. Thanks, Vic. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? I see no hand. Oh, Councillor Francis Smith. Not a comment, Chairman. I think this is a good project and I would like to propose we accept it. Okay. I'll second it, Chairman. I think it's a very good proposal. Okay, so we have a proposer and a seconder. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Thank you, Offnam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Tracy, we moving on to Hartlebury now. Um, no, we're still waiting for Hartlebury because obviously oh, because we gave them a, a different times. Um, and Lynn, I think we're still waiting for Lynn Yap's colleagues to arrive. So yeah, I haven't been able to get hold of them. I think they're probably travelling. So if you want to go ahead and do it and just rely upon me, that's absolutely fine. Are you sure? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, thank you, thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Also, so as well, I've got Deford and Cropthorn, haven't I, on the agenda? Yes, yes, yeah. Um, the Deford one. The Deford one first, before, give some just, just in case Cropthorn do come in. Yeah, I absolutely. About, I was just about to suggest that actually. So yeah. If you were... Okay, members, if you turn to page 111, we'll take the Dufford and Bestford proposal. Okay, this is for two streams of funding. This is for 8,273 from the new homes bonus, which is using up their, their final amount. And it's also for £6,801.92 from the section 106 pot. This is to provide a climbing frame and two... two Thank you, Anne. I'm three, looking for the invoice that we got from the bearing company last week. It's probably in there somewhere. Yes, okay. someone talking. Um, so, yeah, that's for the, uh, hey. the picnic benches and table yeah. for the Millennium yeah. Green play area. The local member supports the project. Um, for the 106, it actually meets the criteria that must that must be spent on and to enhance the public open open space. Is everybody happy with this one? Okay, thank you, Tracy. Would Lynn like to speak on this? Um, yeah, I can just give you a little bit of background. It's like I said, like Tracy said, it's to use up the section one hundred six. Um, over the last few years, there's been quite a new, lot of new development in in Deptford and Bestford. 
and um, the, the Millennium Green is sort of quite limited on what it's got there. And um, we just thought we sort of put it out to what everybody wanted, the children and what people would like to see there um, and came up with sort of a few options. And the, the climbing frame um, was the most popular. We just thought it would be good for the, the younger children and the older children. And um, since, since obviously lockdown, a lot of sort of families have been sort of stuck at home and sort of little places they can go so we went for the picnic tables which have got the wheelchair access the extra sort of facility so that you can get wheelchairs underneath because uh, as we all know that you know when you've got somebody in a wheelchair it's difficult to get under these picnic tables um we did go out to consultation um we put it on the facebook page on our website we did have quite a lot of feedback a lot of it was positive, but um, some of the um, comments on the Facebook consultation, people were sort of, there were some people that wanted sort of goal posts and goal nets for the, for the boys to play football with, um, which we had looked at and investigated before, but obviously they're sort of a, a risk to vandalism or being stolen. But on the back of sort of the consultation, we've now got a small working group up and running um, where we're engaging sort of support from the local community, parents to sort of say what they want in addition to the Millennium Green and how we can work together as a community. And if they want extra stuff, they can fundraise for themselves, perhaps little sort of maintenance groups to sort of clear up the overgrowth and try and get the community together within this project. Okay, thank you for that, Lynn. Um one question, Where, whereabouts is the Millennium Green? Mm. Sort of back of the, the, the village hall. Do you know where the village hall is in Deford? No, 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 I'll tell you what it is. You've got, you've got the church in the middle and then you go down this sort of track, this little road and it's sort of down at the bottom of this um, little, I don't know what the name of the road is, but um, it's just sort of an open space, not far from the village hall. And um, it was, it's a sort of a charity sort of commission type thing. And um, it, it's, it's got a couple of swings and it's not very appealing to the younger people. A couple of benches and that's about it, really. A couple of goalposts, but um, it's not. It's actually in Defford rather than Bestford. Any, any comments from the panel? I think the good things I'd like to point out, the good things sort of from this application is that sort of putting it out on Facebook, we've actually got interest from the community to actually get engaged in it a little bit more. And, uh, you know, rather than sort of just sitting back and being critical of what's not there, we've actually got sort of a lot of people interested to sort of try and work together and do our own little bits of fundraising for the playground as well now moving forward. Do you want a proposal, Chairman? Um, just, just a second, Audrey. Um, Tracy, are we taking this to a vote or? Um... Um, well, it, it's it will go to executive board, the section 106 part of it. But because the new homes bonus part of it is less than 10,000, then that part wouldn't really need to go to executive board. So, no, as long as we've got a proposer and a seconder and, every, and the panel's all happy with it, then, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we've got Audrey proposing. Uh I'll propose. The seconder. Councillor Margaret Rowley. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tracy. Yeah, so are you happy then to move on to the uh, to the Cropthorn one? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That's absolutely okay. Fine. Thank it's you fine very Tracy. much. Thank you. So this clear, is, can um, I just, be, just clarify on the last one? So you, you, you've all agreed both elements. So the new homes bonus, which is delegated to me with the panel, and the 106, which is a recommendation to exec board. You're all happy with that, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm getting enough nods. Thank you. Sorry, yep. to, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> right, thank you. So, yeah, so Cropthorne um, Parish Council, this is for the Corundine Care Farm Project. Um, they are asking us for 27749 towards their um, their project, which is the oh. amount they have left to... Oh, so we've got Sloop. Sloop just coming in. He's from Corundine. 
Excellent. All right. Okay. So, yeah, and just um, just to update the uh, the panel, the local member who is actually here today, Councillor Tony Rowley, he does support the um, the project. So I will hand over to you then, Lynn, and uh, welcome Sue Fry. <laughs> Thank you for coming in early. Okay, right, this is a project from Cropthorne. Um, we had been looking for some time as sort of where we could spend the money and um, the, a lot of sort of thoughts that had been put to the parish council were for like a wildlife space, open space or space where um, people could sort of have small allotments. But unfortunately, there were no landowners in the village that wanted to sell any land. And um, then our district councillor, Mr Rowley, sort of suggested Cora and Dean, which we'd never really thought about, um, and sort of made some inquiries and had some discussions with, the, with Sue and um, Kath Brocky from Cora and Dean. And, um, and they came back with this um, fantastic proposal um, to create um, sensory open space for um, the people, the, the adults that they have down there with special needs, um, learning difficulties, um, but to also involve the community. So if you're cycling or walking, you can benefit from um, the facilities that will be down there. It is the start of a, a much, much bigger project um, which is going to be ongoing for quite some considerable time. But this is just sort of start to get the foothold to make the start on, on what they want to do and, um, and, and support from the community. Um, we did do a lot of feedback from Facebook and things. A um, couple of questions were raised, which we took to Cora and Dean, and they've answered those and cleared those up. And um, a lot of positive feedback from within the village. Thanks to Tony, Tony Rowley. Yes, um, th thank you, Chairman, for allowing me to uh, come in and just say a few words. And as um, Lynn mentioned, I, I did uh, recommend um, Corandine um, to the Parish Council. When I was first elected to the ward, I did have a visit to the premises at Corandine, and I must say I, I was amazed at the work that they do with, uh, uh, with, with children and, and young adults with uh, difficulties and disabilities, particularly through autism. And it's a wonderful place. And we spoke at that time um, about the possibility of of getting more involved with the community and the community of Cropthorne getting involved with, with Corin Dean. And, and this was an ideal project that we, we spoke about some years ago about the possibility here um, at Corin Dean and really bringing the two parties together was important that, that Cropthorne community, the parish and village community should get involved with Corin Dean and vice versa Corin Dean should get involved with Cropthorne. And, and this seemed to be an ideal project. And uh, so I gave it my full support and uh, I, I'm pleased to be here today to uh, give my support, physical support in a virtual way. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Um, Sue Fry, would you like to have a word at all? Uh, you've joined us. Um, I don't know if you've discussed it before. Um, I've been working with Corin Dean for, for quite a while now. Um, I'm not one, a member of staff. I help out from time to time and I do some coaching and mentoring with some of their staff. My background is in the community and voluntary sector. And um, I know I'm very uh, impressed with the work that um, Kath does, does at Corandine because she's working um, with the most severely disadvantaged um, young people. They tend not to be children, they're over 18. Um, and she gives them a great quality of life in, in whatever way she can. And that quality of life, you know, the lovely place um, that they live um, and the surrounding 50 acres, she shares uh, with these young people and is happy to share with the community, you know, ensuring that there's um, respect from the community about, you know, the use of the land, um, being respectful of um, the animals, for instance, there was a question about dog walking and of course she's quite nervous about um, having animals and um, dog walkers who let their dogs go free um, on agricultural land. But there's, there's, you know, she's very willing 
Kath and the team are very willing and they've, they're not selling the land to Corandine as she could have done. She's saying, let's build them um, some exercise and um, invite the rest of the community to enjoy uh, what will be there, which will be good, sturdy equipment, um, suitable for adults, um, as well as young people, you know, younger people, um, built on an adult scale, a place where you can come and enjoy the farm, the scenery, the, um, the smells, the sights, they'll improve the habitat for wildlife. Um, and it's um, on or quite pretty close to a footpath. So it should be fully accessible, although there's no car parking there. Uh, but then it's it's not about, you know, sort of rolling up to a car park and then just enjoying the facilities. It's about enjoying the outdoors and getting some exercise. So that's what, in brief, the um, the project's all about. Thank you for that, Sue. Um, any comments from the panel? Hugh Hamilton, then Councillor Francis Smith. My only concern with the project is rather like the previous one we were talking about. It's a project of nearly £28,000, but there only seem to be four expressions of public support. Um, is there anything further that can be added on that? Um, I think if I can just add, very much like the lady from the other parish council, that <coughs> in parishes you tend to find that unless you've got a problem with it. People don't tend to shout out. They sort of only come up and say something if, if they've got a, a grievance with it. Um, looking at the Facebook, there was sort of over a hundred people who'd viewed the, the post on Facebook and liked it. Um, but like I say, I think very much a case of it, you know, nowadays people only shout out and complain if they don't like it. They don't sort of very often come back and say that they supported it. Even though we did have some people that came back and supported it, there's only four. Um, okay, Hugh. Councillor Francis Smith. Thank you, Chairman. I would just like to concur with Councillor Riley's comments. Um, I think probably two years ago, I went out to Corandine um, at the, their invitation um, and had um, a conduct a tour if you like but I was amazed by the work that they do and how the young people respond to the uh, activities that they're offered and to the area that they can do them in it, it's just amazing to see them and they look so happy and really I think appreciated what was being done for them so I would have no problem with this and if there's no other proposal I would like to propose we accept it. Councillor David Morris. Right yeah um, really it's just a matter of how accessible it is to the public um, you know I think it's very good for the people that it's aimed at at the moment the people that are, are residents there or using it but how easy is it going to be for a member of the public to trot along and arrive with their three children or whatever and be able to use it as well when other people from the centre are using it or people are using it there, are they going to be welcome for five, 10 people to come along and use it, the public use it, or is it going to be limited as to when people can actually go to it? Um, I think I could probably answer that. The service users are accompanied by at least one adult at all time and often two. Um, and they cope quite well with a, a low stimulus atmosphere. So not, they don't do very well with hordes of people. So um, if 10 people turned up to um, the area, I suspect that the, um, I'm pretty sure that the staff would actually take the service users away back into the farm because they wouldn't be able to cope with that many people. Um, if it's one or two, they're going to cope fine with it. Um, so I would say it's accessible by the public at all times and would only be a problem, which I don't see happening actually, if you know 10, 20 people turned up in one go. I think if that was to happen, um, it may be that there's lots of friends of Corandine um, with um, like, for instance, you've got Wick Care Farm just down the road in Wick. Um, and I suspect that if they wanted to bring their 
uh, folks up, they would actually let Corandine know and say, we think we'd like to come between one and two on Friday, etc. And I think probably the staff would assess whether you know, 20 um, or 10 uh, villagers are likely to turn up at that time as well. So they're going to monitor it only in as much as it will be for the welfare and the benefit, um, you know, to ensure that the service users are comfortable. I, um, I, I still worry that it's actually open to the public to use, that it, it's like it's up to the book to be able to go to it. So it's a good idea, no, no. and I'm, I'm fully supported in that sense. No, but, it's... Um, it, it would be fully open. I'm only saying that perhaps if Wick had intended to bring a minibus full of 10 people, they would be likely to contact Corandine first. Um, it's on a public footpath. So in theory, um, you know, a whole horde of ramblers could turn up and use Exactly. It. Well, that's, right. that's okay. more my point, really, is that just the general public just turning up. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and then suddenly, you know, you've got sort of five or six general public arriving, but then you've already got the school, that the, the other group, group that have arranged to be there as well. So you're going to turn the public away because no. you can't fit everybody on that site at that time because it's going to be, you, it's going to be safe you, for everybody, hasn't it? it? You couldn't turn the public away being as it's on a, a public footpath and it's um, a crop thorn community project i think it's pretty unlikely do you know the site david uh, where I, it I don't, is i know where it is but I'm, i don't really know it very well no but uh, right. i'm not i'm quite happy with it it's just the yeah, accessibility yeah. just wanted to check on but um in fine. terms of you know turning up with a vehicle you wouldn't take a big vehicle up no. there and, um you know because it is quite a small lane um and i think it's much more likely that um cyclers and walkers would access it so it would be a small family group, I would suggest, that would turn Brilliant. up rather than a, a lot. That's fine. Thank you very much for that. OK, thank you for that. Um, any more comments before we go to the votes? Well, Councillor Francis Smith has um, proposed. I am more than happy to second. So can we go to the vote, please? All those in favour? Wonderful. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, we are now on the, the fourth New Homes Bones proposal, and that is Hartlebury Parish Council. And I'd like to welcome Keenan Pratt. Um, thanks for joining us earlier than you thought you were going to. Um, it's, the proposal is for a outdoor gym equipment and Christmas tree electric electric power supply, they are ask, they're asking us for £19,364 towards a project that's costing £21,220.76. The local member supports the proposal. So I'll hand over to you, Keenan. Thank you. Great, brilliant. Hello, everybody. Um, and I hope you're well. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, in typical work from home fashion, my internet popped up to say that the connection's unstable. So hopefully there won't be too many problems, but if you do have any issues, just stop me and ask me to repeat. Um, so as Tracy introduced me, I'm Keenan Pratt and I'm a parish councillor representing Hartbury Parish Council. Um, firstly, on behalf of um, all of the other councillors and the people of Hartbury, uh, I'd like to thank the panel for their time today and the opportunity to present a bit of a, a brief synopsis of our proposal to hopefully secure your approval for the funds. Um, so the project we'd like to undertake, as Tracy mentioned, is essentially comprised of, of two elements. The first being an, an electric power supply to the village green and the second also being to procure and install outdoor gym equipment for the village green. Um, as our clerk highlighted in the kind of initial communications, we are a newly formed parish council and we don't really have a prior working knowledge of the new homes bonus process. So we're hoping that we've um, submitted a compliant, compliant proposal and everything's good on, on that front. But if there is any feedback that anyone has for me to take away, that would be great. And I can present that back to the council also. Um, so really, unfortunately, due to the kind of current national restrictions that we've got in place, the council weren't able to do um, as much face-to-face -face engagement with parishioners as we'd originally have hoped. Um, so as I'm sure that all of the other councils have had to do, um, we've, we had to get a bit creative as to how we engage with them. So really we've 
look to exploit other forms of communications through video conferencing, social media and other platforms. So in total, um, we received about 60, well, we received 65 responses. Um, the largest number of these responses came from Facebook and via email. Um, so there were lots and lots of suggestions which were, were great and the council established um, a new homes bonus working group to essentially down select those and select the most appropriate and most feasible um, with the budget that we'd that we've got and the funds available. So this essentially came down to the electric power supply and the outdoor gym equipment. Um, we discussed this at our last parish council meeting and the public were in attendance um, here um, and also our district council councillor was in attendance at that as well. Um, so really the, the funds that we're, we're looking for, uh, as Tracy mentioned, the total cost is circa 21,000. Um, this is comprised of around 4,000 for the electric power supply and 17,000 for the outdoor gym equipment. There is a slight shortfall in the funding, which we're hoping to make up with through funding from the community infrastructure levy. Um, however, should we not achieve that funding for whatever reason or secure the funding rather, it won't hinder the project um, and the, it, there are options there to enable us to continue. Um, really the project will bring significant benefits to, to our local community. Um, as a council at the moment, we're currently exploring initiatives to make Hartlebury more of a community hub. And we're, we've got a, a, quite a large push at the moment to engage with local businesses and charities and even train line initiatives to bring more people to Hartlebury. Um, so this project will really help us um, achieve this and will benefit, will be really beneficial to the cause. Um, firstly, and primarily the electric power supply as outlined in the proposal, um, will help us um, install a Christmas tree each year, which will be great. Um, we'll be able to host a bit of an event at, at Christmas to turn the lights on and bring together the community and the local church, which will be really good. Um, however, really so a bit further than that, it will have um, other benefits. Um, also, in that, uh, the, another thing that we're currently looking at doing is actually... Um, installing lighting around our football pitch that we have as there's quite a significant demand in the in the local community for that for those facilities at the moment so it will also help us with other other initiatives that we'd like to to achieve um, secondly the the outdoor gym equipment um, having this facility will mean that we're able to provide free and communal fitness equipment to parishioners um, and the wider community really. I think that most of us on this meeting will appreciate that, um, that the government at the moment is really uh, essentially trying to reassess and um, uh, really consider the population's relationship with sport and physical activity and the importance of it, especially with what's happened with COVID and everything over the past year. And as a council, we'd really like to make sure that we're doing our bit there. Um, however, there was a concern that even though obviously this has come from the community that we didn't just want to install gym equipment and for nothing to happen with it or for no initiatives to be run on our part. So what we're trying to do at the moment and we're in kind of active talks with various different companies is to try to formulate and pull together some sort of wellness program for our community um, so that um, there's different things on offer. Um, one company that's on board at the moment that we've got is the Todd Way to essentially establish classes that utilise the gym equipment and bring it bring together um, the local community in that sense as well. Um, so that will be really really beneficial. Uh, and we're currently looking at um, other companies as well within the community to try and pull together a, a proper program um, to to add some weight behind it. Um, Ultimately, I'm here as a representative of the local community to push this through. So I'm happy to take any questions that, that you've got or, or may have in this sense. So um, feel free to, to ask away and thanks again for your time. Thank you, Keenan. Um, you did break up a little bit in, in there, but I think we, um, we got most of that and if not all of that. And uh, one, one thing, is this in the um, parish plan at all? Um, so it, it does support the parish plan in that it's um, about um, 
kind of bringing more people to the community and acting more as a community hub. Um, the parish plan is actually something that was formulated by the previous parish council. Um, so again, that's another thing that's on our agenda at the moment um, with quite a, quite a number of other things is to try and come up to speed with all of that and to, and to renew that. So it's definitely something that, that will be going into it once we've had chance to, to update that. But it does essentially support what the existing parish plan um, underpins and outlines. Councillor Nicholas Rice, did you have your hand up? Just wondered what you got for your 19,000 equipment. I mean, what do you actually get for that? Because I. Um, <clears throat> so, in terms of the equipment, it's it's circa 12 pieces of um, gym equipment. So it's diff it's different things from um, kind of uh, rowers and um, essentially like treadmill type things. Obviously, without the um, without it needing uh, electric and, and all that kind of stuff. Bikes, um, disability accessible equipment as well. Um, one of the things that we'd really like to do if we can get your approval and endorsement to go ahead is the, the company that essentially provided us with the most affordable quote actually come out and do a design service so that um, we can even though we've, we've kind of it's for a package, um, we can make sure that that is designed so that it's best suited to the to the area and and what people want and need. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Right. Let's um, can I have a proposal at all? Councillor Margaret Riley. Yeah, I'm happy to propose that uh, we should support this. Seconder. Councillor Francis Smith. Thank you very much. Just, um, um, just to, sorry, just to remind you, Jeff, this will it's a recommendation to executive board. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, all those in favour, please. Lovely. Okay. Thank you for your time, Keenan. Brilliant. Likewise. And good Thanks. luck with it all. I think that's the end of those. Um, Tracy. Yeah, we've we've got a couple more new homes bonuses, but all the ones over ten thousand are have now been completed. So these these two remaining ones are for the uh, the, the panel to decide on. Um, so on page 121, Sedgeborough Parish Council. This is a proposal from Sedgeborough using up their remaining £1,318. It's to install a second defibrillator um, in the village at um, St Mary's Church. Um, in 2015, we gave them £1,000 towards another defibrillator, which, um, which is outside the village hall. But they recently had, I think it was an inspector, come and, and suggested because of the size of the village they you know they'd benefit from having two two defibrillators and the local member supports this one okay councillor audrey Steele. Oh i propose that we accept it chairman thank you audrey any seconders councillor nicholas wright Okay, all those in favour? Thank you. Tracy, on to the next one. Yeah, the, this one, the final one for us to decide on, um, is on page 127. It's from Evesham Town Council, and it's for £9,950. Um, and it's it's for the disability platform lift, which will cost eleven thousand pounds. We previously, you, you may remember, um, we previously gave them forty five thousand for the um, to replace the old pavilion with a constructed building. And on the on the report, you can see there's a photo of how it used to look and how it now looks. But this proposal for the extra money is um, for the disability platform um, because to summarize, um, 
due to flooding, it meant they had to raise the building higher than previously planned and to comply with disability regulations. So they needed to install, install a higher one. So you can see on, on, the, um, on the, the report that um, the, uh, the lady, um, Jean Aldridge has given a bit of a, an overview why it's needed and how, how, you know, how it came about. So yeah, so it's asking for an additional 9,950. Eight local, well, all the local members support it. Um, one local member, and I think Councillor Frances Smith may want to comment, she's not against the application, but um, she uh, believes that the, the, the project has been well supported from the new homes bonus, and so is a little concerned about the request. Okay, <coughs> thank you, Tracy. Um, any comments then? Councillor Francis Smith, would you like to comment? Thank you, Chairman. As I said to Tracy in my comments, I'm not against this application in any way whatsoever, but I'm just a bit concerned about the cost of this and the fact that they only mention additional funding of £1,000. Now, I know that they have had another £1,000 from um, divisional funding by different county councillors. So I'm just wondering whether they really need all of this money. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, I, I think it's a good, um, it would be a good news story, I believe. Um, Vic, sorry. Just in relation to Francis's concern, if you were minded to approve this, it could be subject to officers checking that um, they did need the money rather than um, um, accumulating money, as it were. So um, if, you, if you were minded, as I say, if you managed to support, leave that level of detail with officers and we'll have a conversation to make sure that the money is needed to bridge the gap. We but could actually put up to and then I could ask for invoices we've done that before I would be happy with Vic's suggestion I have to say well, I'd like to propose Vic's suggestion have I got a seconder I I'll second. second okay so let's put that to the vote please all those in favour Thank you. You're happy with the word in, Tracy? Yeah, I can always listen back on YouTube. <laughs> and it was, was 9,950 pounds. Yeah. That's right, that's right, yeah. Because Not 950,000. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and then finally, um, we had three applications in that was less than, ten, uh, less than a thousand. So these were already approved by the lo local member and the chief executive, and that was £602 to Charlton Parish Council to upgrade the street lighting, £656 to Salwalk Parish Council towards the tree and wildflower planting at Martin Hussinchy Green, and £119 to Little Comberton Parish Council for planting red may trees along Almley Road and Whit Road. Okay, thank you for that. No further ado, we move on to um, item 10 on the agenda and um, over to you, Cherry, please. Thank you, Jed. Um, we've updated the work plan quite a bit since the last meeting. So th this is just an opportunity if anyone has anything to add or that they think needs amending to let us know. Any comments from the floor? I don't see anybody waving. Okay, thank you very much, Cherry. Item 10, oh, sorry, item 11 on the agenda is uh, messages from the meeting. Vic, sorry. Um, I, I propose you have uh, three, three messages so far, depending on what happens between now and home time. 
the first one would be around the community legacy grant update. I think that'd be something that our exec board would be quite interested to know. Um, and then this, the second one is around the 106 approvals and the third one around the new owners bonus approvals. So three, three key messages in terms of your, what's occupied most of your time this afternoon. Okay, any, uh, any comments from the panel? No? Okay. So Tracy, you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, just to point out, have we, have we moved on to number 12? Not yet, not oh. yet. <laughs> okay. Moving on to number 12, meeting <laughs> and agenda items. Um, just to note that the next meeting on the 26th of April is a special meeting um, to assess um, community legacy grant applications. Also, there are likely to be um, on the agenda new home bonus proposals as we um, have until the end of March um, for the end date for applications. And also 106 applications will be uh, on the agenda as well. Okay. Further meetings are now scheduled on the calendar as follows. All of these meetings starting at 2.30 p.m. Monday the 7th of June. Monday the 6th of September and Monday the 1st of November. Um, hopefully at some stage we will be able to get out onto a minibus and um, have a tour of the new homes bonus. It's, um, that will be hopefully sooner rather than later. Okay, Tracy, would you like to add anything there? No, that's fine. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, so I suggest... Um, suggest the fact Sorry, Chairman, Gordon. did you give us a, a time for the meeting on the 26th of April? Um, all the meetings are going to be 2.30, Audrey. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you. Usual time. Usual time. I'd like yeah. to suggest now um, a five-minute comfort break. So if we said um, quarter past four, how does that sound? Sounds good.